Now, see, what I didn't tell him about is the pigs. I told him, don't worry about alligators. Don't worry about snakes. Don't worry about turtles. But I'm betting there's pigs along this river. You might make it in your forerunner, but the other car probably won't. Because that, Caden, how far, he comes down here more than I do. What? How deep do you think that is right under the bridge? Um, two, Eight, 18 inches, two feet? Two feet, probably. Yeah. Shit starts going over my wheel bearings. I'm not real, <laughs> I'm not real keen on that, huh? <laughs> so check this out. We, we're coming across the bridge to go do something else. And the big bridge, and I'll show you that in a minute. And it's flooded. The whole river is super flooded from this big rain that we just had the other day. And we did not expect that. We've, we've never seen this this deep. This road actually goes all the way down under that bridge and around the other side, there's campsites down there. And the water level here has gotta be, I mean, it's gotta be 20 feet above the river level. So we thought, hey, we've got waders in the truck. Let's go see what it looks like. So that's what we're gonna do. So uh, you got me here. I'm gonna take the camera here. I'm gonna show you. Caden is decked out. He's gonna go deeper than I am today. He is uh, totally decked out. And we're gonna go, uh, we're gonna go explore a little bit. Ooh, that sounds like. And we had some folks who just pulled up behind us. If he didn't pop a tire. So let's see how deep. Oh, this gets deep. This deepens up quick. I just hope there's not a pothole. Good thing it's too cold for alligators out here. I was going to say, yeah, I hope there's no like snakes or something. Big stick right in front of the kitchen. Yeah, this is too cold for the snakes too, but. Well, I think it is. And I'm getting about to my max. I mean, I'm, I'm knee high right now. And we're just right here, and this is still going down. I was say, maybe this is a little higher than I, I thought it was. Let's see how far we can get before. How far can these go in? Those you can go clean up to, the, clean up to where the bibs stop, which is mid-chest on you. I thought you said don't go that high. Well, don't fall in a hole because you'll fill your bibs oh, up and then you'll drown. I see. Because if you fill the bibs up with the water, it's so much weight you won't get out of them in time. These I can unclip and pull off if I fill them full of water. I see. Those, not so much. All right. It doesn't look like it gets a lot deeper than where I'm at, but he's, uh, he's gonna go and see how far it goes. <laughs> Fortunately, this is winter, so the snakes are, uh, the snakes are up and the, uh, and the alligators are up. There's no alligators this far up, actually. Uh, they just don't come up this far up the up the rivers. I'm about I'm about at my limit. So let me zoom this out and show you guys. I mean, that's it right there. I guess this is upside down, but that's it right there. I mean, I'm I'm not going any deeper. Now, see what I didn't tell him about is the pigs. I told them, don't worry about alligators. Don't worry about snakes. Don't worry about turtles. But I'm betting there's pigs along this river. And with this up the way it is, it's gonna be, uh, now see the bridge is still working. It's still usable. There's people going up it, riding their bikes. He's coming back. I'm gonna see if we can make our way over here without, oh, I can't, I can't let this, I can't let this uh, create too much of a wake for me. That was, look at that. That was probably three inches, three inches before it got too deep to go. And let me tell you, this water is cold. I mean, I can feel the cold through these, through these hip waders. This is not warm water. And uh, I guess it is middle of January, so I wouldn't expect that, but this is the campsite area that normally you would drive down that road that we just came up to get to the campsite. So in the late 1800s, there was a town founded here. It's called Alston. Problem was, much like today, a massive flood came through in the early 1900s and wiped the whole town out, and it never came back. That was it, it was done. 
and it literally sat almost on the spot where this bridge is. So uh, today is kind of interesting that we're seeing another very large flood. Biggest one I've seen here in 10 years uh, come right through this same area. Now I'm going to guess the one that wiped out Alston was probably considerably bigger than this one. I see y'all came the dry way. Yeah, we did. <laughs> I came the wet way. Oh, no. <laughs> but we had waiters, so we thought we'd give it a go. I wonder if this guy doesn't like the fact that I parked in the middle of the road. This river is called the Broad River, and it's normally pretty wide. I mean, it's not, a, it's not the Mississippi, right? But, it's, but for South Carolina, it's a pretty decently wide river normally, and now it's even wider. This is way up beyond the banks. I've never seen it flooded this hard. And uh, we're up into the trees. Tell them about the campsites that are supposed to be right here. Well, yeah, these campsites, if you look to the right, these are, these are the rest of the campsites. So we came through one set of campsites. Look at that poor squirrel stuck on that tree right there. I bet he does not go swimming. I'm betting that squirrel right there just stays on that tree for a couple of days until this water goes down. Or it jumps to tree to tree. I'm not sure if any of the other trees are close enough he can get over. But uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is pretty cool. We, we haven't seen, I've never seen this before. We've lived here 10 years. So uh, the other half of the campsites are here underwater now. Can't even see them. And they come all the way down. We haven't even reached the normal bank of the river yet. So as you're looking over the sides, we haven't even reached the part that is the normal bank. Usually when we come walking up here or riding bikes across the bridge, the kids will actually come and ride down here next to this device. I don't even know what this thing is. Somebody in the comments, if you know what this is, tell me what this is. It looks like an overflow of some kind or uh, some kind of a water level control is my guess. But that's just a guess on my part. Maybe it's a pump of some sort. Oh, check out the beaver out there. Look at the beaver. You got a beaver heading out in the middle of the river. Maybe he's going to get more wood. Maybe he's looking for a dry spot. I don't know. Right about here is the normal bank. About here is the normal bank of the river. And this river runs normally at a slow enough pace that, um, that you can't even see the movement of the water. I mean, it just it's nice and wide. It's not very deep generally. And it just kind of moves nice and easy. But every now and again, I guess, it gets this high. Looks like that guy across the across the uh, river over there, his, he's got a deck. And that deck with his, uh, his dock right there with the flag, that normally is 20 feet above the water. I mean, I've always wondered, I've been out here dozens of times, and every time I come out here, I wonder whether or not, why anybody would build a dock or a deck that's 20 feet up in the air. And I guess the answer is this, this is why they do that. Looks like somebody else has built a some kind of a, I don't know, it's a hunting cabin or a tree fort or what over in the trees there. I don't think I've ever noticed that before. But that's up on stilt, so obviously whoever built that also knew that uh, this river is going to come up high. And I'd be willing to bet, I'd be willing to bet this river could probably come another 10 feet up and these houses around here wouldn't have to worry about it. Because there are houses on the river all the way down. And they're, I mean, they're all big properties. They're all, you know, 20 acres or 10 acres. There's no neighborhoods on the river, but there's big properties all the way down. And I'd be willing to bet that every one of these properties, man, look at this churn. This is crazy. So if you ask me, one of the reasons that churn is like this here is one, because we're coming between the pylons of this river, but also I was talking earlier about the footings of that bridge that was here when Sherman came through during the Civil War. And they're right here. One of the main footings is right here, and it's a big one. And so I'm going to guess, and this is kind of that middle river, the middle river one. It's the biggest of the four, I think, that are here, or five that are here. And uh, I'm going to guess that a lot of the churn we're seeing here is because of all the water that's hitting that footing and uh, is circling around it. <laughs>